good old fun music we can all groove and chill to. Stay tuned right here on the Iconic Playlist. This is the Iconic Playlist. So today we are going over my quote-unquote binder CDs. I have like two binders that have like 500 each of CDs. Now I did make a video about these uh, like about eight or nine months ago because the thing is with these binder CDs, there's really not a lot of special things in it. A lot of it is just like soundtracks, low budget soundtracks, I'll just say. Compilations like country, pop music, like just the hits, blah, 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 those kind of things. There's some Christian compilations in there too. Like there's not a lot of, you know, video worthy things. So I made it into this appraisal video where I was talking about the value of my collection and I scanned every single one of them because I still do have all the pamphlets with them. I just kept them separate to save space because this is before I even knew of the idea of Terrafold sleeves, which in the future I'm going to be putting my entire collection, including those, and then just listing my entire collection onto my new shelving units I'm going to put in at that point, which you'll see in the future whenever I get that done, probably a year from now by the time it's fully finished. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, when I do that, then you'll see every single album in my collection in actually my collection and not in any binders. Anyway, this video, I'm kind of just highlighting some of the key albums that I showed from there. Like starting off here is L. King's Shake the Spirit. This album wasn't amazing. That's why I put it in the binder. All these albums, in my opinion, weren't collection worthy. That's why I put them in the binder. So there's still stuff I wanted to own, but it's not stuff I really cared about playing a lot. And I probably would never really go to after converting it into digital files. So Shake in the Spirit is one of those albums. Uh, Charlotte Carden's Phoenix is another one of those. This was a blind buy when I originally bought that. There was like one song on it that I thought was all right, but the rest of the album was very dull. I think some of it was in French as well, so it's just not my style of music. Uh, Big Sugar, Eternity Now. This was actually a decent album, but again, it just didn't make the cut for my shelves because I only had limited space for these shelves, right? So I could only hold so many, and this album just did not weigh in as being good enough to compare to the rest of the albums on display, which you can see all of the albums on my CD collections for 2023. There's like a six part series of that where I go over every single CD. Plus, obviously CD hauls that came out after that show to my new things, so you can really see my entire collection as of now if you do all of that. Got Barbra Streisand Walls. This was a decent album, but again, Barbra Streisand is one of those artists where I'm just, I don't really love her music greatly. Now this album right here, The High Women, this album, when I originally bought it, I really, I was, I was mixed on it. You know, there, I liked it to a point, but I also didn't like it, so I put it in the binder. This is an album that I actually did later on put into my normal collection. I took it out of the binder. It is in my normal collection now because it, it just started to really grow on me. And now I really love this, you know, this album. This was kind of a quote unquote super group, I guess you would say. I know Marin Morris is a part of it. For instance, I think Brandy Carlisle. I forget the other people in the group. But yeah, High Women actually have some great songs on here. I don't know about their other albums that they made. I don't know if there even is any or if this was just the only one. But yeah, this was just a great album. It just took me a while to really fall in love with it. The Killers, Imploding the Mirage. I talked about this before. I really did not like this album. There was two Killers albums I bought and... It was this was one of them and i was like man this album is really boring and i just don't like it and murray is just one of those artists that i just can't really get into fully her music is just kind of too slow for me so that's why i put her in the binder again there's times where i like listening to but it just depends on my mood a lot of these are also picked up from like the thrift stores and stuff and that's why i got them because they were like a dollar each and i was just buying as much as i could kind of find my music taste and stuff same thing with like diana crawl it's just not fully my style of music, I guess. Now, this is a Zoe Girl album. Again, this was another one that kind of grew on me a bit and I put onto the collection. Not that it's an amazing album. Oh, and this Supremes collection. The reason I had the Supremes collection in here because I had a different collection in my actual CD collection on the shelves and it was just better quality than that one. So I just didn't want to put both of them on display when I had limited space and that's why that Supreme one is there. The Puppini Sisters or Papini Sisters. This album, again, is actually a really good album. Um, the, I think my case for it got damaged and I originally just put it in my binders and then put the sleeves in with the rest. Because again, I was just limited with space. Now I'm going to be redesigning my whole music setup in the future. So I mean, it's all going to be different anyway. So yeah, all these will be on display, like I said. So this is another album that doesn't really belong in the binders, but currently it's just in the binder storage. Well, those are all the albums I really wanted to point out as like collection worthy albums that are belonging in my normal collection. The whole video where I go over all of them in like a time lapse is on the channel. 
like I said, is like from I think almost a year ago or around a year ago, it was like nine months or something like that ago. I forget the exact time period. I did it after my CD collection. It was like one of the videos I did after. I did it praising my collection. This was part two. I'll try and linking it down below if I don't forget to do so. <laughs> but yeah, that was just showing in a time lapse everything in my collection. This video is just more pointing out a few albums that I think are collection worthy. In the future, when I do reorganize my entire collection and make a whole new setup, which like I said, I'm planning on doing over the next year, I will be doing videos on that in the future, obviously, when that process starts. And then there will be no binder albums anyway, because they will all be up. <laughs> And that will be pretty cool for sure. So yeah, right now, this is my quote unquote binder collection of all the other albums. Like I said, it's just really nothing extremely special to talk on and on and on about. I will say the High Women album, the Papini Sisters album, those are the two best ones. The Supreme ones, I guess you'd say two, but again, I just have a better collection. So it was like, I didn't feel like putting that one out, but those are collection worthy albums. The rest of them, they're decent albums or they're okay soundtracks. I have a hard time displaying soundtracks tracks in my collection unless it was like the disney ones is because i count those as like a separated collection anyway but putting like random movie soundtracks like the bodyguard or whatever in my normal collection i don't know it's just for me it just throws off the collection and i didn't have room to separate things by genres because my whole collection was those on normal bookshelves and yeah i mean it just made it hard for like soundtracks and stuff and they just looked out of place no matter what i did it was just too hard to separate it by genre like i said so that's why i got a lot of compilations like uh hits 2019 or hits 2020 or whatever it was uh plus all the soundtracks and stuff in those just because it just made it more neat i still had the music and i did not throw away any pamphlets for the albums like all the cover arts and stuff they all are still there i don't ever throw away stuff like that obviously I would never want to do that. So if anyone is wondering if I ever did that, nope. Now there was some blank, not blank, but there was some CDs that didn't have cover arts because they were like bonus discs that were in a thrift store. It's like, oh, this album randomly has two CDs in it. And it's like random. Like I got about a hundred of random loose CDs. So those I never had artwork in the first place. There was like a Willie Nelson one that went, didn't have the cover art. So I just throw it, threw it in the binder and stuff. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this somewhat short <laughs> little video talking about my binder collection. Like I said, I'll try linking below the full appraisal video. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more music-related videos.